Okay, it's recording. Um, so sorry, we skipped the first uh, 15 minutes because uh, that was the, the perfect timing for Tom and myself to uh, recap on this topic and uh, see uh, what was the original problem, uh, what could we solve last week, and uh, where we stand. If we can go further on that, and the question from Todd was actually. Uh, related to that, can we go a bit further on that without asking the users to provide information or to provide a Docker image? So my answer, quick answer, is uh, not at the moment, because um, for one reason, we don't know in the pipeline what is the job that is going to be the one for building the project. So we are missing one of the piece of the of the big puzzle, the bigger puzzle. To go one step further, uh, we need to identify one job, one specific job that could be reused, and we don't have that information. That will require to modify the, the CI configuration and all that kind of things. That's why we are not there yet. The solution that we found last week, just for the record, it's uh, backward compatible with what we have today, and it doesn't require us to update. GitLab itself or the runner. So we don't rely on any other team. Let me write that down, short answer now. <laughs> we need a way to identify it. And so we also talked about uh, maintenance and actually this new version uh, using the, the user image would not require some maintenance on our side, apart from providing um, packages for our tools, but that's all. We don't need to provide packages for all the architectures or, or whatever. Uh, even if we have to do that, that could be automated very quickly, but we don't have to create one image for Java 11 and that and that and that and Java 12 with that and that and that etc. Creating a huge matrix where we get lost very very quick. Uh, and so at that point, I guess we need to figure out what would be the next steps. Uh, that's what I added in the doc, in uh, not in the doc, in the in the issue. And. So I asked Fabien Cato, uh, who is one of our staff developers, uh, staff engineers sorry, in, the, in the team to take a look. He was pleased with the solution. I would be pleased to have someone else with a technical background taking a look just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. I don't see any, uh, any blind spots in this proposal, but we never know. Before rushing into you know, saying to customers, we have a solution and it's going to work. That would be the worst scenario ever. <laughs> and uh, we probably, the next step for me would be probably to have a, a POC, having a, a kind of pro, small prototype to uh, demonstrate that it's working out of the box. It can solve one of the, the reward problems that we have out there. So we need to identify also one of the reward problems that we have. And currently in the test projects so far, uh, it was working out of the box because they were just too simple. So we need to find something that would be a bit more complex than that. And, and what, uh, what the new proposal is, is that going to be, um, I, I assume that's going to be a, a type of MVC um, and from there, is there, um, do we have any concept of, of growth or what something to delight the customer with this would be? Um, it's, it's a kind of, uh, of MVC by itself. The missing part that, uh, that we don't have today is the ability to install or packages into the, uh, the provided image. So for that, my recommendation was to use some, some system packages instead of something based on curl, for example, that we, you would download, especially because most of the, uh, the Docker images out there, they don't have curl installed by default. So that would create one extra step for the users. 
uh, having some system packages would work, but most of the, the images outside are based on Debian or uh, Alpine. So the MVC for me would be, we support all images based on Debian first. And second iteration, we also have the packages. If you use Alpine, we have the packages for that. So we can split that in, in two iterations uh, because we try to have really the smaller exchange possible in each uh, iteration. Uh, so that, that would be that. If, if we have that, we can have something working real quick. We can have uh, a POC uh, as well, and we can ask users, uh, especially your customers, could you try this solution with your uh, specific environments? Uh, one problem that we will need to solve as well is uh, license management because it's something very specific. We rely on a, on a specific tool where um, it's license finder and they try to solve that problem by having a gigantic Docker image where you have Python, Go, Java installed, it's more than three gigs and it's not even working. Uh, the customer that we were talking about at uh, the beginning of this, uh, this meeting is complaining that license management is failing after a long time uh, of, of processing. It's failing uh, for this project. So he decided to use something else, which is not really far from what we, we envision. And now it's working. So we can. We will have to update heavily, I guess, license uh, management to support this kind of, of scenario. And the, the final image would be a lot more uh, lighter than that than today. Hi, Lucas. Thank, thanks for joining. Yeah, sorry. I had a surprise delivery when they tell you there's a window between five hours where something will show up. Yes, we have that as well here. We could, it's not a window, it's a, a here in French, we would say it's a fork. You have a fork of, uh, of hours, and uh, when they start delivering, it's not a fork anymore, it's a rake. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So we were at the point where uh, we, we used uh, the first 15 minutes we thought would to sum up where we are, uh, to give uh, some, uh, some background and some insights about well, well, where we are coming from, because we started this discussion a year ago uh, already. And uh, we covered the point where, can we make that a bit more automatic so that the users won't have to matter about providing their own image? And I, I don't see how we could do that without uh, being able to point exactly, this is the build job and this is the one that the kind of image that you need to reuse to uh, to run the the, the analyzers, uh, and I was talking about license management, which is very different from the others because they they try to solve the this this kind of problem by having this gigantic image where they they put every language and every framework with the foot in there, and it's not even working. Yeah, if you don't have the right version of Python in the image, you're you're good to have something else on the side. I'm just taking notes here. Version is uh, embedding all languages and frameworks. But it's not even working. And so I think the, we were so telling that the next step would be probably to have a POC, uh, starting to prototype with that. You said that we need a, a real world example. If you have anything in mind, I remember that this uh, meeting is recorded. So no mention of customers. Um, yeah, I think that we, well, we do have, um, we do have one, one that we discussed last time. That's an option. Um, and so that would be a Python example. Um, Python is fun and it's, uh, 
kind of an interesting approach where you take something like a scripted language, then you come need to compile some native extensions because they don't really provide out of the box packages for some of those popular libraries. So I think that's probably the best in terms of a slightly isolated but complex example. Um, I think the other thing that we've talked about before, and I think this came up during our conversations today, was whether or not we have any data on, we don't have any telemetry or usage pings for the types of analyzers that we're using um, that are popular in gilab.com, but that would tangentially be worth pursuing. Um, taking notes at the same time. So one of one of the difficulties, I guess, to start prototyping is to have this the, the injection system. But my suggestion was to use packages, system packages like Debian, uh, Debian or Alpine packages. Uh, if you have any better idea, I would be glad to hear that. <laughs> but we are talking about MVC as well, and it, that could also uh, make the, the first MVC a bit lighter. For example, we would say we only support Debian-based uh, images. And next month, we're going to support Alpine as well. That would give us some more time to package and probably package a bit better. Uh, I knew a few tools that we could use to cross compile and to create uh, or even RPMs for um, okay. uh, packages uh, for um, Red Hat based uh, distros. Do, do we? Um... What what's the advantage of us of using like a Debian package versus just curling down? Good question. Like, that's a good question. Um, very simple. Almost all of the images that you will find on Docker Hub they don't have curl installed by default, nor they have wget. So that would be an extra step for the users uh, if they want to grab more tools. That's the, the first point. Uh, second point, if you have a different architecture, you need to update your curve so that you don't know the right uh, package tool. Uh, and the third one is, it's a lot easier to detect the kind of distro that the user is, is using. For example, if we know that it's a, a Debian flavor distro, then we know we can use a uh, dpkg directly uh, dash i for install and then the mm -hmm. URL of the, of the package and dpkg would handle very simple dependencies like we can tell uh, the Python analyzer requires Python. We can say that in, uh, in Debian and Python is a, a meta package. It, it's not something that you install per se, but if you have Python 2.7 installed, it's going to fulfill the Python requirement, as well as if you have Python 3. So at least you have one Python installed, it's fine. If not, it's going to complain that you have a, a met dependencies and it's going to fail. But that's that's a good um, failure with a with an explicit message where you understand that you need to install Python if you want to uh, use the, the Python analyzer. Okay, um, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so so that a Debian package for Python for our Python analyzer that sounds like a great MVP target. Yeah, and that's not really hard to. That there is, I think it's FPM. Um, what's the name of this uh, generator? FPM. Yes. So if you provide the project, they are able to generate all kind of, of packages. So the point of having this system packages is if you know that it's a, a Debian based distro, for example, you know for sure that all the tools to install dev files are going to be there. Otherwise you have to guess and we will run into problems for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, another one is, if I remember where go X. Uh, so there are a few tools out there that would be uh, useful for that. No, it's go XC, I guess. I don't remember where I am. I'm not sure if it's just uh, a cross compiler or a packager as well. But there are, there are many for sure that we can use without having to create all the, the required folders because believe me, if you try to create a package for Debian, you have to create a bunch of folders, a general with a very specific format. It's, it's a bit tedious. Mm -hmm. If you have to maintain that. All right, and we're out of time. Sorry, I didn't see that. Any last comments? Any complaint you want to make? Sure. Yeah, that's a good one as well. No, it's All right. okay on my end. Perfect. Todd, anything on your on your side? No, I'm I'm good for now. Perfect. Thank you very much for joining. We really appreciate it. And we'll uh, see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.